Greetings everyone and welcome to Calamity Size Shipyards. I am your host Simon and today we are going to go through part two of my online SketchUp tutorial on how to build starships. So without further ado let's get to it. So here we see our previous efforts from part one which is the main saucer section of the ship. Uh, we're going to work on the engineering hull part now. So, we're going to begin with creating a circle, as we did before. Uh, just make sure I've got the 60 sides on there, which is kind of like the standard number of sides you want on a circle. As I said before, it uh, has a nice smooth edge to it without being too blocky, but at the same time it doesn't eat up too much memory. Um, now, if you want to, uh, you can work either vertically or horizontally, whichever better with. Um, I'm actually going to work more horizontally with this one because that's kind of like how the, uh, the hull is laid out. Um, you'll see what I mean in just a moment. So in order to flip this up on its end I'm going to first of all make it a group. That gives a box around it and means then that uh, number one if this circle touches another surface it doesn't stick to it and number two it gives me the ability to flip it around and do all sorts with it. So as you can see here I've just clicked on the edge of that blue square and that little green circle appears like a clock face and allows me to flip this up. So I'm just going to flip this up onto the blue edge there, or the blue axis which is up and down. If I double click into that box now I can manipulate whatever I want to in there. So uh, as before, we're just going to pull out that circle a little bit. Now I'm working with a very basic constitution class hull here. Um, it's not going to have uh, all of the greeblies and everything like that which the original constitution class enterprise has, but um, like I said, it's a basic model just to give you an idea of um, how the tools and everything works in SketchUp. So, in order to get that nice tapered front end, I'm just going to enlarge this by a few degrees. There we go. And if you want to you can make this as uh, long or as short as you like. I think around about there is a, okay. And uh, and if you ever see the original USS Enterprise, you can see that it's got these little concentric rings that are just inside the um, sort of primary hull where the navigational deflector dish is. Uh, so I'm going to click on this button here, which is the offset button. That basically says, look, whatever edge you select. I'm going to mirror that edge and I can either shrink that down or enlarge that edge. Okay, so selecting that tool, click on the edge, I'm going to reduce that down. Uh, now, if you double click on that, once you've done it manually, if you double click on it, uh, say from this edge, it'll make exactly that line of thickness again inwards, if that makes sense, yeah. Um, I don't want it to be quite as thick as that, so I'm just going to reduce that down, probably about there, maybe. Um, if you want to do this by a specific distance, you can actually type it in. So if you see where the distance is in the bottom uh, right-hand corner here, it goes in meters. Uh, we're going to do like 0.2 and hit enter. And at least then if you want to make more concentric rings, which we do, let's just do another one here, like so. Click that again. Oh, that didn't work, so let's do 0.2. There we go. We've now got a couple of concentric rings which are exactly the same kind of thickness. So this one here and this one here, these are the two rings we're gonna pull out now. Okay, so pull that out a little bit. And the same thing with that one. There we go. So we've got that nice concentric ring effect and then the um, dish would go on the surface there. Um, actually, it's a good point for later on. It's a good idea to just line up where the center of your circle is. So we're going to click on the edge as we did before and SketchUp is very friendly. It immediately highlights where the center of the circle is there. So we're going to click on, draw a straight line along the vertical axis and then draw another line horizontally and if we ever need to place anything there on the middle we've got this kind of guiding line here to show us exactly where the middle of the dish is so if we place something else on top of it um, it's not going to be all wonky or offset all right 
So from there, we're going to work on the main part of our hull now. So we're going to pull this outwards into a kind of uh, cylindrical shape, which is typical for the Enterprise. And about there, all this is guesswork really. I'm just working on very generalized proportions. Hopefully I've got that roughly correct. And we do know that the rear end of the Enterprise um, engineering hull tapers inwards a little bit, or narrows a bit. So we're just going to reduce that down teeny bit. And we've got that nice sort of tapering edge towards the rear. Yeah, I think that's looking okay. That's not too bad. So you can already start to see here that the engineering hull is starting to take shape. Now, um, we want to create that kind of little, uh, I don't know if you remember, but on the rear end of the Enterprise, just underneath the saucer section, it's got a little kind of cut out section of it where the rear end kind of goes from the bottom and curves inwards up towards the uh, shuttle bay. So we're, we're just going to work on that for now. I'm actually going to pull that edge out a little bit more. So I'm going to double click on that edge and just move that. That gives us a little bit more kind of surface area to work with. Okay, so everything we've done so far is pretty much what we've done already uh, with the saucer section. Now uh, we're going to work on intersecting surfaces. So this is quite a handy tool. So uh, it's quite handy if you go to view and hidden geometry. We can now work with all the little lines and stuff that are form the polygons of the model or the sides of the model. You can see here that our circle comprises of like 60 sides. Okay. I'm going to create a square. You'll see what I'm doing in just a moment and uh, this is basically just the way I work. Um, if anyone's got a better method, again, do leave uh, comments in the comments section. Maybe I'm just doing a really laborious version of this. But this is just, that I'm pretty much self-taught in SketchUp, so this is just how I've worked over the years. Uh, I'm going to make this little uh, rectangle here a group. I'm going to go to the Move T and flip that vertical. So I'm kind of creating this kind of screen in front of my, uh, in front of my model there, okay? I'm going to use this screen to basically draw a shape and then we're going to extrude that outwards and intersect it with the model. Uh, you'll see what I'm in in just a second. Now if I try and look through it, it's opaque, I can't see through it. So we need to change this material into something that's transparent, so it's like a piece of glass. So if you go and double click onto your paint bucket, this little default paint bucket tray will open up. Uh, it's got loads of different kind of textures and colours. We're going to go to glass and mirrors and select translucent glass grey and paint that. Now you can see just about, we can see through it here, it's like a bit of tinted glass. And I'm going to go to camera and parallel projection. That basically gives us a parallel view of what we're working with. Okay, and what edge are we at here? The front edge. So I'm going to go to standard views and we're going to go to front. That literally gives me the image now, instead of like a 3D shape, it gives it as a kind of two-dimensional shape. So we really are uh, being accurate with the shapes that we draw. I'm gonna select the two-point arc button. And from one point to the other, I'm gonna draw a straight line, which can then be curved. So about there would work. I'm just gonna curve that inwards. You can have as many goes at this as you like. Once you've drawn the line, if it's not quite in the right area, you can select it and move it up and down, all forwards and backwards. If you want to, you can press that uh, scale tool, click on the control button, hold that nap down and you can make it wider or narrower. And I think in this work, in this format here, that works quite well there. And you can see, because I've selected show hidden geometry, I've now got all the little lines here on the actual uh, model itself to be able to compare. So 
I'm going to make sure that that matches up more or less with the middle line here. Which I think is about that one. Fantastic. Now, I want to create like a little uh, shape here which can be pulled out. So, I'm just going to link up this arc to the edges. Probably downwards is the easiest one to do. And now you can see I've got my own unique little kind of uh, cutout shape here. I'm going to select all of that by double clicking on it, hold the control button and press C, control C. Press escape a few times and delete that whole thing. And then do edit, paste in place. Now I've just got that little section which I've worked on before. And that is lined up perfectly with my model. So let's go back to our perspective view. It gives us that nice kind of 3D depth to everything. I'm going to press the push pull button and extend that outwards. And you can see here I'm actually working my way through the hull of the model, like so. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can either select all of it, cut it, which is Control X, double click within your box again, edit, paste in place, and now this surface here, this little wedge that I've extruded here, uh, will interact with my hull. You can do it that way. Or you can select on your uh, main hull there and explode that. And that basically ungroups it. So now both surfaces interact with one another. If I was to try and move this around. It would uh, normally, it would interact with my surface there. Let's just try and pull that inwards if that works. These edges lined up. Now, if I double click on it, everything is selected. And it all moves together as one. Yeah, they're not two separate models anymore. Okay, so double clicking on everything, I'm going to press the intersect faces. Uh, what I've done there is I've double clicked on everything. It's all highlighted. I've right clicked on my mouse and from the menu there I've dropped down to select intersect faces and then I'm going to intersect faces with the model. So that basically means that I'm going to get one model and it's going to intersect or slice through the other model. Let's do that. You can see the difference here is before it just had these kind of dashed lines. Now they've all gone solid. So get rid of these surfaces. Now anything that connects to the model on the outside you want to get rid of. And now we can see that cardboard cutout shape there, or the cutout shape, is part of my model. So I can delete that, and delete that, and hey hey, I am left with balls and empty spaces. <laughs> So sometimes that doesn't work. Let's undo all of that and see what went wrong. Yeah, I'm, I'm no expert here. Sometimes it doesn't work. All right, I'm going to try deleting all the edges. This is sometimes what does happen in SketchUp. Sometimes you can intersect a surface and it doesn't quite work for some reason. I think I just deleted it. I was a bit overzealous with deleting everything. So now we do have our surface there. I'm going to press the paint bucket tool. Uh, you can see it's still see through there because we selected the translucent glass grey texture earlier. I'm going to highlight my bucket or hover my bucket over the main part of the hull. Press the Alt key. And now you can see it's like a little pipette. That's a sampling button there. I'm going to press on that. Sample the texture that the rest of the hull is in, which is like a default texture and paste it. And, uh, you'll always have um, sort of like a front end and a back end to your textures. The back end is basically a darker color and the front end is the lighter color. And you, generally speaking, you want the front of the texture to be facing outwards. So uh, again, just clicking on that texture, 
going to right click there and do reverse faces. There we go. Now we know that both ends are covered. Phew, that worked. Not quite to plan, but it worked. So there we have our basic hull. And again, uh, if you wanted to do like a little bit more detail in the shuttle bay, uh, we can do that. So once again, I'm going to work through this a little bit quicker this time. Control C that surface. Paste in place. Make it translucent and go back to our parallel projection. Go to the front. that hidden geometry now I would like uh, like a little section cut out here so I can chuck in my shuttle base so now I want the lines that I'm going to create here to match up directly with the model so going into the model here I'm going to select the second line up here so we know that we got this straight edge at the back and I'm going to continue that all the way through the more the uh, little screen that I've set up there so it actually slices through it. And then, using my mouse, if I just hover where the line goes through my screen, you see it turns into a little X. That X symbol means, look, this line that you've drawn, that is the exact point where that slices through your little glass panel, which is great. So I'm just gonna draw a little horizontal line there and get rid of the rest of that line. It served its purpose. Let's go back to our front view. Brilliant. So now I know that if I continue this line along, that line directly matches up with this line here, which I drew earlier. Okay. That button I've just pressed there is the um, previous view screen. So sometimes if you've got your model and you're cycling around and you're mucking around with it, blah, 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 uh, you can press that button and it will cycle through all your previous views. Sometimes it's a bit easier to do that. Cool. So from there, I want like a little flat edge and then I want a little angled edge coming backwards like that. So we'll draw that all the way up to the edge. And again, because we've touched our line to the very edge of the box, it gives us our little cutout, which we're gonna cut. Delete that, paste in place. And this time, if you want to, you can actually color in the box on uh, both sides. It saves you from doing it once the uh, surfaces have been intersected. Pull that all the way across. And again, you can delete these surfaces now if you want to. So you can actually see visually what's going on. We don't need that line there, we can get rid of that. Let's reverse these faces so the right side is facing outwards boom and we're going to intersect that with our model I mean just got a message there cool so as I zoom in let's go back to our perspective get rid of that hidden geometry oh by the way if I um, just go back to the hidden geometry if I wanted to like delete this surface and get rid of it. If I've got the hidden geometry on, I can only get rid sort of, of a few segments at a time. Uh, if I click on the line itself, that deletes two of them. If I click on one surface there, it deletes one of those sort of segments going across. Uh, not super efficient if you want to get rid of a whole bunch of them. So that way, if I get rid of the hidden geometry, it then selects that entire surface as if there were no uh, separating lines, and I can get rid of that all in one. Likewise, if I click on that edge there, the whole surface will disappear when I delete it, but then the edge of the ring remains. So you can just get rid of it that way. And there we go. I've now got a nice slopey little shuttle bay. Looking a little bit more like the Enterprise so far. See what? I'm going to add one last little detail, which is some shuttle bay doors. Uh, we're going to need a sphere for this. So, uh, the easiest way to get hold of a, of a sphere or a ball is just simply download them from the warehouse, or you can create your own. Um, 
I'll show you how to create your own sphere now. It's kind of like what we did with the dome there. Um, but really, it's it's far easier to do it from the SketchUp warehouse. But because this is a tutorial, let's show you the hard way first of all. We're going to create a circle. I'm going to copy that circle. Make it a group. Flip it vertically. Like so and then paste that previous circle in place. Now I've got two circles uh, intersecting one another like so. We'll explode our previous group. So now both of them interact with one another. We are going to select the center of our circle and separate it into two. We can get rid of that and get rid of the bottom. So now we've got a whole circle and basically a 90 degree wedge uh, sitting on top of it, nicely lined up in the middle. We're going to use our follow me tool, go along the edge, yes please Mr. Follow me tool, I want a whole ball there please, boom, got it, let's reverse those faces, you can see what I'm going for here, let's have a look at the hidden geometry. Going to select all of that and make it a group now because i've made it a group i can shrink or expand it i can rotate it if i want to do whatever i want with it i can make it a bit more of an oval like so so again you know if you're making sleeker saucer sections or bridges or anything like that these are all the things that you want to be able to manipulate the sphere for a lot of the models i make start off with a sphere which is then manipulated into these different shapes. Now I want this to line up nicely with the middle of my engineering hole here. So if you can see I hover my mouse with the point tool, sorry with the line tool, I hover my mouse over roughly over the middle of the line and that little blue dot appears. That tells me that that is bang on the middle, it even says so there, midpoint, bang on the middle uh, of that line there. I'm just going to draw a teeny little line just to almost act like a little marker and then if I zoom in to my sphere again I can see here this is where all the lines join up at the top so I know that that is bang in the middle of the sphere I'm going to click on that with my move key and then we are going to zoom all the way in through that surface and line one up nicely to the other so now I know that the top of my sphere has lined up nicely that little line I drew earlier. I'm going to get rid of that line. Select my sphere. And uh, using the move key again, um, I'm going to move it into position. Now, sometimes if you want to try and move it upwards or something like that, it doesn't quite follow that well. Like it goes at these funny angles or, you know, it's a bit difficult to just do it with the mouse alone. You can make life a lot easier for yourself by pressing the up key on your keyboard. And now it will just lock it into that. You see how the line there is I'm where my mouse is? I'm trying to move it here and it goes in all these different directions. Uh, if I press the up key, it makes that thick blue line. That means now wherever I move my mouse, that sphere can only move up and down. And that works on any of the directional planes. Um, I reckon that's kind of a good height there. Uh, I want to move it backwards a little bit. So again, I'm going to use the left key to move using my left key there. I think that's the right plane. Yes, there we go. And uh, yeah, that's working for me. Coolio. I've now got a little dome. Oh, it's a bit of an angle there. Let's adjust that. There we go. I've now I've got the little dome of a shuttle bay. Let's just have a quick look here without the hidden geometry. And there we go. I think you'll agree that is now starting to look not bang on, but roughly like the USS Enterprise we all know and love. Uh, I tell you what, I'm going to do one more thing before I go. I'm going to pull this edge out here a little bit. Draw 
a straight line and make that into a curve. And then using the push pull me, I'm going to go straight down. And that has essentially given me that nice curved edge. Let's get rid of all the flotsam and jetsam there. Okay. There you can see here I've got these little annoying edges. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to clean those up. Can do. There we go. Again, this is very rough. Yep, for some reason I can't do it on that side. Okay, I'm going to leave that as is for now. We'll try that again later on uh, with a better result hopefully we'll uh, try intersecting the surfaces uh, oh what the heck I might as well do it now so I'm going to draw me a circle uh, let's make this a group first of all select that holding shift by the way means you can select multiple items at the same time let's make that a group now if I draw a circle on the top here you can see you can either go along the red axis or the horizontal axis there Again, it's selected the midpoint in the group. So we're going to go horizontal axis and go to the edge. That means now the circle matches up or lines up nicely with the edges there. I draw a little horizontal line. It separates it into two. I'm just going to do control C, delete, and then paste in place. So I want these edges to line up nicely. I was being a bit troublesome before. Can do. So I'm going to select that bottom surface. And I'm going to use the uh, control key to just widen it along that horizontal plane until it matches up nicely with the edges there. This is where you can really see where the uh, hidden geometry comes in very useful for really getting your edges to line up nicely. I'm going to go down again. Again, look at that matching up to that bottom line there this line here which I'm matching up with and again horizontal plane we'll match that up cool and now I've got that little circular section which lines up very nicely with the rest of it let's make it part of the model Don't want that big thick line there, which we want to get rid of that. Done. Now if I was to get rid of this line, because it forms part of the actual structure of the model itself, it'll actually I'll actually lose a whole surface on that. So rather than getting rid of it altogether with my eraser key, I'm gonna hold down um what is it the control button, I think it is, yes it is, and press the erase key on it, and it just softens that surface. So now when I delete the or get rid of the hidden geometry, I can't see it. Case in point, boom, makes it do this. Makes it like uh, still exist, but just kind of cloaked, essentially, or hidden. There we go. Now I know that little lip there is a little bit big, but it does demonstrate how to create that nice uh, shaped edge there. Okay, if I wanted to, let's go back another stage. Just press the uh, Control Z button a few times. Um, I could highlight all of that, select the scale button, and using the red scale there, just reduce that in a bit. So now I've got a much softer kind of curve. Paste that in place, get rid of that line, and then I can soften all of my surfaces again. That's better. So again, not absolutely uh, perfect or accurate, but it does give you that rough idea as to how to create a rough USS Enterprise. Beauty. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. Uh, come back for part three. 
where we're going to work on the uh, warp engines and maybe the uh, connecting pylons as well. See you later. Oh, uh, by the way, if you do like these videos, please feel free to hit that like button and the subscribe button so that you don't miss any further tutorials. Cheers and cheerio!